So, hello everybody. Welcome to my talk about LibrePCB. Um, maybe first a quick question. Who knows already LibrePCB? Okay, maybe a third. Um, so, I was here uh, two years ago um, with my uh, talk Introduction to LibrePCB. Um, and now I want to give a, a short update what's uh, happening with LibrePCB. So, for those who uh, don't already know, uh, LibrePCB is a free open, uh, the open source EDA suite. Uh, it runs on Linux, Windows, and Mac. And yeah, the development started already in 2013, and there is a slow but continuous progress. Um, and what happened since my last talk in 2018? Um, in November 2018, there was our first official stable release, um, 0 0.1.0. And after that, every few months, a new release was published. And I don't like to mention every feature implemented in this time, uh, but just want to focus on some specific features. And one of these features is the library editor rule check. Um, probably every hardware designer knows the problem. You create a package or a symbol in your uh, library editor. Uh, then you add it to your design, to your PCB or whatever. And then you realize, oh no, designator label for, forgotten in the library editor. Or, oh no, silkscreen is overlapping with the pad or something like that. And then I ask myself, why do we have a, a design rule check in the board editor, but no rule check in the library editor? Because a lot of issues you can already catch in the library editor, actually. So in LibrePCB, um, we implemented a pretty simple, actually, uh, check with a few uh, rules defined. And if you violate some of these rules, you get, for example, the big scary yellow warning. There is something really wrong with your uh, item you have created. And in the right bottom corner, you have a list of messages. Um, what's wrong with this element? So we, you can already fix it in the library editor and you're happy when you add it to your board. Um, another thing is the LibrePCB CLI. Actually, for most users, not that important. But I ask myself, um, in software development, we, today we use um, continuous integration, static code analysis, um, pull requests for code reviews, and so on. But for PCB tools, we, uh, for libraries or projects, probably almost nobody uses such tools. For example, on GitHub, um, continuous integration. So, but what's, what's needed to make this possible? We need a CLI, so you can run checks automatically on continuous integration. And for example, um, we have a, a CLI which is able to check libraries um, if they are valid and yeah, more checks will be added in future. And in, for the base libraries of LibrePCB, uh, those are uh, hosted on GitHub. We use GitHub Actions to run these checks. So if a pull, requests, uh, pull request adds uh, an issue to the library, the CI will fail. The same we have for projects. Um, so you can use the CLI or continuous integration to run the CLI to check your project if there are, erectly, for example, uh, electrical rule check issues and um, if you want, you can also automate the generation of Gerber files, BOM export, and so on. And actually, uh, probably the most important user of this tool is Aisler, um, because now you can uh, upload your LibrePCB project directly to Aisler.net if you want to order your PCB. And Aisler runs our CLI to generate the Gerber files, so you don't have to generate them uh, locally on your computer and 
the best thing is, of course, uh, for every uh, order of a Libre PCB project, Aisler makes a donation to Libre PCB, so you can support Libre PCB by ordering your PCBs at Aisler. Um, how to get started with Libre PCB? Um, we have a lot of binaries or, or packages available, for example, or, uh, for Windows, for uh, various Linux distributions, for Arch Linux, for NixOS, even for Open Pandora, if someone knows this thing, it's an ARM processor inside, and Libre PCB runs pretty nice there. And of course, for macOS and BSD. So now I want to give a short demo to see Libre PCB in action. Um, so let's start Libre PCB. If you, when you start Libre PCB the very first time, um, you get a short uh, wizard which just asks for, for a path where to store your libraries and so on. Just click through and you're ready. Uh, then the control panel uh, says you don't have any library installed, so it's not, pre not very useful yet, the tool. So you can just open the library manager, which fetches the library list uh, from our API server. Um, so this tool is also um, able to update your already installed library. So you can just say, oh, I want the base library. Let's install that one. It downloads the library from the internet and installs the library. You see already the, the warning uh, disappeared because now you have libraries. And yeah, we can check what's inside this library. Uh, the library is scanned in the background uh, because there are many files, so it takes a few seconds to create the index. And now we have the, the library elements uh, we just downloaded. Uh, symbols, packages, whatever. Okay, so now what's a typical use case? You also need a, 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 your own local library. So let's create one. For example, because some transistor is missing in the other libraries. Then you just need a device, for example. So let's add a device, um, whatever. Um, it asks for choosing a component which we want to implement. So let's say it's a MOSFET and channel and which package we want to use, maybe TO220. Uh, these library elements, the package and the component is contained in the base library we just downloaded. Okay, so now you have the device and you only um, need to create the pin map, basically. Um, open the data sheet, assign package pad one to drain, two to uh, gate and source maybe, and the pad is unconnected maybe. Okay, so now we have a warning because we didn't assign this device to a category. And the cool thing is uh, this warning has a, fi uh, a lot of warnings have a fix button so you can, or, or even a help button which gives some context what's wrong. And many warnings have a fix button and in this case it opens the category chooser. Um, so you can assign a category, what else? Um, or title, case, uh, title is not um, title case uh, because the F is uh, lowercase, so you can just fix the uppercase, finished, no warnings. Okay, so now we have uh, our library elements ready. So let's create a new project. Okay, and we start with the schematic, uh, with, for example, the schematic frame. And, of course, we want to add our, um, our MOSFET. Uh, I added it to the, I don't know where I added it, but we can find it. Um, hmm? Ah, oh, here it is under discrete transistors. 
Cosmos fit end channel. Here it is. Okay, so let's add this one. Maybe a resistor, what else? Let's just connect them. Something very useful. <laughs> <laughs> That's our schematic. So let's switch to the board editor. And the uh, board editor says we have two unplaced devices. So let's place them. And you can choose your exact uh, device here. So maybe SMD, whatever. And our MOSFET we just created in the library. And the cool thing is we didn't create the package because someone else already created it for our MOSFET. And this package contains a multiple footprint. So we can just switch to a different mounting variant, for example. Um, yeah, so let's create some traces, maybe. Something very simple. OK. Now we want to create Gerber files. Um, yeah. Fabrication data. Um, there you can make some settings, but defaults are fine. So let's just generate it, open the directory, and we have Gerber files here. Let's open it with the Gerber view. And here we are. So simple PCB <laughs> made in a few minutes. And that's actually the main goal of Libre PCB. It should be easy to create PCBs. You don't have to spend hours and hours and hours just to know the tool. Um, it's that easy, yeah. Um, what's the current status of the project? Um, basically, everything is um, working nice so far, so you can uh, create your PCBs. There are, are already uh, a lot of PCBs created with Libre PCB and order it. Um, the main issue currently is the board editor, which uh, needs a lot of uh, usability <laughs> improvements and a lot of features are still missing. Um, and so the priority for the next steps, um, highest pro priorities uh, add the missing features like custom pad shape, blind, buried, wires, uh, slotted holes, uh, pads and so on. And improve the board editor to yeah, to be much more powerful. Also, clipboard, cut, copy, paste is not available yet in the schematic and board editors. And of course, extending the part libraries uh, requires quite some effort. Um, and priority two is um, adding part management uh, for MPNs, uh, assembly variants, uh, 3D models is not implemented yet. Um, MCAD export, hierarchical sheets, and so on. Um, you see, many things are still missing, but for at, at least for simpler PCBs, it's pretty usable. And yeah, if you want to contribute, I would be happy. Um, there are several ways to contribute to Libre PCB. Uh, just check out the website or the GitHub repository. Yeah, that's it. So, question, please. Why did you decide to, to make a new prototype instead of contributing to Kika? Very good question. <laughs> I have a slide for that. Yeah, the question was, why not contributing to KitKat and instead creating a new software? And basically, the main reasons are, I think the underlying, a lot of the underlying concepts are pretty different. So I think I have different opinions how an EDA tool should work and should be designed. And Usually, you, as, a, as a contributor, you can't completely change the, the mindset or the opinions of a different project. And the, the other thing is um, uh, changing. If you uh, make it happen to change fundamental things, 
it's very hard to keep the backwards compatibility to older KiCad or whatever uh, projects and so on. Um, users wouldn't be happy if, uh, if they can't migrate to the new software version. And it's much easier to create a new tool than you ha don't have legacy things. You don't have to provide um, migration paths to crappy file format or whatever. And the other thing is the target audience and the priorities is quite different, I think. Um, KitKat is very feature rich, it's professional grade, it's very flexible, you can basically do everything with that tool. And that's not the primary goal of LibrePCB. LibrePCB focuses on usability and intuitive uh, user interface, so, so you can get started with LibrePCB very quickly. And also portability, uh, stability, and uh, the files. Um, I would like to put files, uh, projects, and so on under version control. And this is also a goal of LibrePCB to, um, yeah, to make it possible much better than with other tools. So, next one. Mm. Um, when you're working behind the corporate firewall, applications aren't allowed to access the internet. And is it possible to update your libraries for a browser? Um, the question is, uh, when working behind corporate firewalls, is it possible to um, get the libraries through the browser? Yes, applications uh, are blocked. Because applications are blocked. Um, I mean, basically, the library manager of uh, LibrePCB just downloads a zip file in the background and extracts it to, to a directory. And you can get the zip file directly on GitHub. Uh, you can clone it with Git. It's no problem. You just can't use the library manager in that case. So, next one. Can you import files from GitHub? <laughs> <laughs> the question was, uh, can we import KiCad files? Um, um, uh, no, at the moment there is no KiCad import at all. Uh, there is a very simple uh, Eagle library import, but it's a standalone application, not integrated into LibrePCB yet. Um, so the question was how many active contributors we have. Um, I think on, if you watch on GitHub, I think it's 20 or 30 contributors or something like that. But the, the main part of LibrePCB is actually implemented by myself. So the contributions are rather small usually. Um, so I'm not sure uh, how to. <laughs> so uh, let me summarize the question: uh, How do, how do you focus on version control? Yeah. Can, can you repeat that for the microphone? Yeah. Uh, how we focus on version control um, of LibrePCB projects and libraries. So basically, um, the most important thing I, I think is that files should not contain any crap, for example, which changes everything. You open the project, close it, and files are changed. That's horrible for version control. And thus, in LibrePCB, um, we strictly separate information which needs to be checked in because it is important for the project or for the libraries and information which is um, not that important for example which layer is visible or hidden or what zoom level you have and so on 
that's not part of the repository in the end. That's stored only locally. So you don't have um, changes you, you don't want in the, in the Git log. Basically. Okay, thank you. Thanks.